Want to know my best secrets for making highly visual presentations really fast and for free? Well, I'm going to tell you in this video. So chances are you've been wanting to use more visuals in your lectures, conference presentations, workshops, etc. But you're worried that it's going to take way too much time or you've already tried it and it has taken way too much time. Or you're worried that using stock photos means that you can only find, you know, super cheesy photos of white guys in business suits giving the thumbs up <laughs> and a cheery smile. Or maybe you're thinking that you don't have the money to create highly visual presentations because that costs too much. Well, I've got a super simple process to help you find photos fast, find photos that are not just cheesy white guys in business suits, but are actually powerful <laughs> and find visuals that are free fast, not cheesy and free. How does that sound? Well, you're going to love this. All you need is a visual database, which is just a dedicated folder system of stock photos and GIFs and illustrations and other visuals that you like organized and set up in a way where you can quickly search and browse through and find images to add to your presentations. Now that might feel a little anticlimactic, <laughs> but just stay with me because this is actually something that has helped so many of my clients in so many different ways, not even just presentations. So just hang in there a little longer and let me explain. So I think it's going to help if we directly compare my idea of a visual database with how you're probably searching for visuals right now. And I think that's going to help you see why it's so different and why that difference is actually going to save you tons of time while also making your presentations better. Whoa, <laughs> that's the goal, right? So here's how you're probably searching for visuals right now. You're working on your slides. You basically create a wall of text, not to make fun of you. That's just what a lot of academics and scientists do. And you do have this moment of like, oh, this is just a wall of text. I should probably add a visual. I should probably add a picture to make this a little more interesting. So you go to the interwebs and you start searching for the perfect photo to fit that slide that you were working on. And it's probably going to take you approximately forever because just of the way you're doing it, the way that you're searching, and then you probably never even find the perfect visual that you want. And so maybe you even just give up and you're like, okay, this is good enough. I don't love it, but whatever. And then you add that visual to your slide. And to be honest, if you already have a wall of text and you're adding a visual to it, it's probably really tiny and kind of looks like an afterthought. So it's not even going to make the huge impact that you wanted. And then just to make things worse, you kind of have to start this inefficient process all over again. And because you've spent so much time just looking for that one visual, you lose your place and you have to take time to reorient yourself to your slides to kind of figure out where you were, where you want to go next. And you, you have to sort of restart that thinking. Let's contrast that with my recommended process. So when you follow my approach and you have a visual database and you're used to it, you've got a lot of visuals, it's become your new habit. It's part of your workflow. What will happen is you'll be working on your slides and you maybe add a few keywords and you'll be more likely to pause and think, wait, don't I just have a visual for this idea? Or you'll think, hey, maybe I have a visual for this in my visual database. And so you search your visual database quickly and it doesn't take that much time because again, it's a searchable visual database. And then you add it to your slides earlier in the process. And so the visual is more prominent. It takes up more space and you don't even have a wall of text. And because that whole process went so fast, you don't lose your spot. You don't really lose that momentum that you had when working on your presentation. So you just pick things up right where you left off. It's so much more efficient for your brain. So having a visual database means you are going to spend significantly less time hunting down specific photos because you already have a stash waiting for you, it means you will start to think more visually from the start. Visuals are no longer an afterthought because you have your visual database and it's, it's always on your mind. It's always kind of there and you'll want to use all of the photos that you have in there. And that ultimately means you will spend less time writing those walls of text 
slides. You'll have that visual database waiting. You will want to use it. So you'll be more likely to just go to your visuals and add that to your slide rather than writing a slide with a hundred words. So hopefully you can see why a visual database can actually lead to a powerful change in the way you create presentations and how long it takes. If you do, let me know by hitting that thumbs up. Okay, so how do you create a visual database? I think you're going to love how easy this is and even how fun it can be. So first, all you do is you go to a free stock photo website and I'm going to share some of my favorites with you at the end of the video. Okay, so you go to that website first, then you browse that website and download the ones you like, the ones that catch your eye, the ones that look high quality, the ones that you can see using in a slide. Don't overthink this. This should go fast. You do not need to have a specific purpose in mind for that photo to download it. Just view it as a download party. Take 15, 20 minutes and make your goal to download 15 to 20 images. Then the last step is to just rename those file names and add some keywords so that you can find it again, so that they're searchable, and then just put them in folders. Create a folder system that makes sense for your brain and the way that you think about images and how you want to find them. So again, the idea is you're setting yourself up so they're going to be easy to find in the future, whether through searching your finder or through browsing your own folders. That's pretty much it. Anybody can do this. Now, in terms of when you should be doing this, when you should add to your visual database, basically whenever and frequently, okay? So I love doing this when it's the afternoon, I'm kind of tired and I wouldn't be able to do much else, but I, I don't want to end the day. I still want to do something. I still want to be productive. I put on my favorite music and then I just have that download party. It's actually really fun and I find it very relaxing and just, you know, the more it's on your mind and something that that you just add to every other week or at least once a month, then the quicker you're going to build up that visual database and have over 500 photos. I probably have thousands of photos. I've, I literally don't even count anymore because I have so many. And the more I have, the more options I'm going to have when I'm working on my slides. So the, the idea with this is you just add to it here and there kind of whenever you can. And another great time to add to your visual database is right when you're about to start working on a new presentation and you're at the beginning stage of my stress-free presentation design workflow. Not a very <laughs> easy thing to say, but if you haven't seen my video on that yet, then make sure you watch that next because I tell you when to add to your visual database and there's even a free toolkit to go with that video. So check that out for more information about how and when to weave in this, um, this new practice. Okay, so what websites should you go to to find free non cheesy photos? So what are some of my free websites for this? I will share them with you. And yes, the links to these are in the description below. Before I share those websites, if you're still here, that is awesome. Thank you. It would be great if you hit that big, beautiful red subscribe button because I have videos every week to help academic scientists, researchers, and evaluators create better presentations. Okay, so the first website I need to tell you about is BioRender. Ah, these aren't stock photos. They're icons and illustrations, and they are so cool. It's a gigantic icon library for science, illustrations, and icons, cells, plants, proteins, chemistry, human anatomy. You know, it, it blows my mind how much is in here. And they have a free account. They also have paid accounts, but the free account is totally reasonable. So check out that website. The next website I have to recommend is Women of Color in Tech Chat on Flickr.com. Now, what I like about this website is that it's women of color and mostly black, Latinx, and Asian women. And they're high quality photos of people in meetings and collaborating and using computers, using laptops and tablets. I mean, these are all things that, you know, professionals do. It applies to a lot of what we do and can be used in a lot of different ways. It's not just cheesy thumbs up, <laughs> you know, it's nothing like that. And 
you know, I have seen these photos on other websites kind of scattered, scattered around. But if you go here and just spend like an hour having that download party, download, 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 you're going to have something like over 100 photos to start your visual database with. So that's why I'm recommending you just go here to do that so that you can have that download party and kickstart your visual database rather than just trying to find them scattered across the other stock photo websites. The next site is death to stock. Now what happens is if you sign up for their email list, then they'll send you random packs of really nice photos for free. They say every month, I do not get them every month. <laughs> okay, sometimes it's every three months. And I swear one year, it was only like a couple times a year. But still, when it arrives, it's a nice little present of about 20 photos. And all you have to do is download the folder drag and drop into your visual database and boom, you've just added 20 awesome photos to your visual database and you didn't pay for it. It didn't take a lot of time. So it's kind of a no brainer for me to just be on their email list and get those photos. And what I really like about their photos is that they're very unique and artistic. They aren't stock photos in the way we think of them, like their name promises. They're different, they're unique. Here are some examples of photos I've received from them over the years. It's a huge variety and again, very different from the stock photo sites that you're used to seeing. So I really like them. Okay, the next website for free stock photos is pexels.com. You may have heard of it. It is very popular and it's one of my favorites. I love it because I can find almost anything here. Doctors, friends hanging out with friends, couples, food, drinks, dogs, cute animals with lots of expressions. I mean, there are so many things on Pexels. And most of the time I start my search on this website just because again, I can just find so many different things. Okay, the last website is probably not going to be a surprise. It's very popular. It's unsplash.com. So it's not news. But I, I wanted to talk to you about this website a little bit and add some nuance to this. So yes, it used to be one of my number one favorites right up there with Pexels. And I do still use it. But it's not quite my favorite anymore because something has kind of happened to Unsplash in the last year. Leave a comment if you notice this too. Like I'm very curious if I'm the only one who feels this way. So Unsplash is very recently starting to feel like Flickr. Um, I don't know if you've ever tried to find really good photos on Flickr, but it would take me hours. I mean, it would take forever because you have to sort through. First of all, you have to find the ones that are available for use, you know, under the right Creative Commons license. You have to to sort through and a lot of them were just kind of amateur level N not to be insulting it's just you want to look for very high quality photos for your presentations and and you know you had to sort through ones that had bad lighting cluttered backgrounds terrible positioning of the subject i mean that was uh, that was what Flickr mostly had it was like finding a gem when you found a, a picture that was actually really good so when unsplash and pexels came on the scene oh it was such a breath of fresh air to find these but now again let me know if you feel like you've noticed this too unsplash kind of feels like that like I f I'm like constantly sorting like I feel like it just takes me forever to find a good photo that meets those sort of high quality requirements so I do still use it but I mostly use it for things that are more whimsical um and you know just just kind of rare images like that so I don't know I do still use it which is why I wanted to at least mention it, but I'm, I don't know how I'm going to feel in a year if they kind of keep this up. Plus a lot of their images now, it's like they're making it for Instagram. Maybe that's a better way to explain this. Like, I feel like I'm searching for photos that people would like influencers would use on Instagram, right? Like they're square and there's no, there's no space around the images, which is what you want for slides. But okay, I'll stop my rant, but I'm curious, comment below if you, if you feel the same. Okay, so here are free photo slash icon slash illustrations to uh, websites to go to Unsplash, Bio Render, Pexels, Women of Color in Tech Chat, <laughs> and Death to Stock. Now, here's a special treat for you for staying all the way to the end. I'm going to share some insider info with you. I want to issue a warning about Pixabay. A lot of people in academia recommend Pixabay. I didn't because you have to be extra careful on that site. 
there is a ton of clip art and cheesy and outdated photos. So for example, here's a screenshot of Pixabay and there are only two photos on here where I'm like, yeah, that sort of meets the criteria of what you want for photos to be included in your presentation. All of the other ones, cheesy, cliched, outdated, won't work for your slides. So I actually, <laughs> I actually use Pixabay for my training workshops when I'm looking for images to explain what you should avoid, what type of images you should not use. So keep that in mind. If you haven't had training on how to choose modern, high quality visuals like the one that I have in my online course or my workshops, I recommend that you avoid this website. Otherwise, you are risking using a photo that is just not good. Okay. Finally, make sure that you read the license section for all of the free stock photo websites, the ones on this list and other ones that you find. And you have to make sure that you use them legally. A lot of academics make the mistake and they think that if it's a nonprofit purpose, that they can just do whatever they want and use images and however they want to. And that is not true. You are held to copyright law. So read the license section. They will tell you what you can do and how to use their photos, whether you need to give credit it or not. Okay, so just make sure you're reading those because each website has a different license. Okay, with that said, feel free to post below with websites that you really like and find good visuals from. New ones are popping up all the time, so I love checking them out. And just in general, tell me what you thought of this video. You know, I'm not like a huge channel over here, okay? <laughs> this is a small channel, so I read every single one and try to reply to them. And if you're already a member of my paid online course, Blast Off to Stellar Slides, then make sure you check out Create Your Visual database masterclass if you haven't already because I share a ton more links to other websites in there including my number one favorite website that I constantly look for for most of my photos I didn't share that in the video it's a secret one for you so yeah be sure to check that out if you haven't yet or just ask me in slack and I will tell you and just in general a reminder that that includes tips on how to find you know high quality non-cheesy photos plus you have tips for that in the course as well well, so now you know my best secret for creating highly visual presentations really fast and for free. So your action item today is to get going with your visual database right now. Sign up for Death to Stock. Go to Women of Color in Tech Chat on Flickr and have a download party. And don't forget to rename them and organize them. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you are ready to get serious about making better presentations and using the visuals from your visual database, well then check out my free course called Stellar Slides in five. The link is in the description below. And if you enjoyed this video and if it was helpful, hit that thumbs up, share it with others, and don't forget to subscribe. And yeah, that's it. I'm Dr. Echo. Thank you so much for watching this video and helping me put an end to death by PowerPoint. I'll see you next week. Bye.